So today we have absolutely awful lighting and I'm sorry for that and video quality. The only thing I can use is my laptop camera so I'm sorry about that. That's where we are today. My um, camera camera needs a battery sorting out. Mind you the quality on that at the moment isn't the best I've got to have a fiddle about. <laughs> I thought I'd just pop in and do a really pop in. I live here, you know what I mean, I thought I'd just pop in and do a video on books that have been impactful to me in my life, <laughs> so I did that, and I've got some of them here, I've got two dragons, and I've just knocked Legless over, whoops, he now looks like he's been eaten by a dragon, um, <laughs> there we go, I just was like, if we talk, we, let's talk about books, but, but also be reminded I am massive <laughs> geek in the tolkien -y world i didn't feel that this was heavy enough on tolkien books but i suppose i could do a different video on all the tolkien books i own i suppose so i do own a lot well not a lot a few i don't even own lord of the rings that's shocking i borrow it um <laughs> because we have we have lord of the rings in the house it's just not mine okay <laughs> I dressed a bit um, Lord of the Rings y today. I feel a bit leglessy. Lego lass, if that's annoying people. Um, with my little sword necklace. And this gives help for me. Don't know why this hoodie does. I've offset it. I've got um, corduroy hobbity trousers and a hobbit amount of leg hair. But. Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Right, books. Now, these aren't necessarily current books. These are books that were impactful in my life. I've left off books that I absolutely hated <laughs> that impacted negatively. For example, any text I did at secondary school. I Weirdly, you'd think maybe, like, me as a person, I'd like... George Orwell, but I don't like his writing style. Right. <laughs> All Mice and Men. Different author, but those were the books we did. Uh, I did at secondary school. Hated both of them, didn't think they were right. Also, Romeo and Juliet was the Shakespeare we had to do, and that was boring. I wanted something like Macbeth or Hamlet. One of the good ones. <laughs> um, okay. I could have Peter Pan on this list. I've not got Peter Pan on this list because um, we'd be here for ages. You know my thoughts and feelings on Peter Pan. Peter Pan and Wendy, that is. First book, childhood book, How to Train Your Dragon. It's a very good book. Now, I fell in love with this, with all of these books. Um, love Chrissy DeCal. I like the drawings in it. I like all the lore law i suppose law about the dragons and they're just an extremely engaging book for a child i probably read this when i was about eight i'm thinking we also had the audio book of this and whenever we'd um come on hol go on holiday to devon the holiday kind of north devon the child we used to have this on audio tape and the audio tape had david tennant doing it all the voices it was wonderful gotta love david tennant but yeah this this set of books if if you've got children or or i mean if you're a child watching this video maybe go on to kids youtube kids not 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 here no offense um but here we go love this book um, are they written the best? No. Will they get a child into reading? Yes. Are they funny? Yes. Is it, and oh, she has she created a wonderful world that kids can, you know, escape off into? Absolutely. Incredible books. Love them. Next, another book from my childhood. Well, this isn't the actual book. This is a copy I brought. <laughs> and this all cement how weird I am. <laughs> as a human this is a book from my childhood 
This is a doomsday book. Is it a book most children had access to growing up? Probably not. But I. this is more, I suppose, me as a early teenager. Whenever, right, listen. I am currently estranged and will be for the foreseeable from my grandparents. Yes, it's sad, but life goes on. But growing up, I have really fond memories of whenever I was unwell and and my parents didn't want to leave me home alone unwell at like a 10 to 13 year old. I would go to my grandparents' house. <laughs> My granddad has a really large library um, of a lot of books, a lot of really interesting books. But for me, it was always the history books. I loved the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. That was one that I loved. I'm keeping my eye out for a copy of that that I can get second hand. But I also loved the Doomsday Book. And my grandparents would often, often, I've gone posh, would often take me to... Um, various different stately homes and the like. I would always look them look for them in, in the doomsday book and see how many cattle they had and things like that. So the, my love of history is what this is representing for me. Um I'd buy this. Um personally it's a really good book to have if you like history. Um you can see how places were. What I like to do with it this is me being a complete and utter arse <laughs> is is the only way I can <laughs> I can state this is I will read about a stately home or a place that I go to and I love the National Trust, don't get me wrong, but some of the people they have working for them are so up themselves <laughs> and you'll be going round and they'll be trying to engage you in com conversation saying this i've met some fantastic people at national trust places but some of them kind of old upper class posh um will approach you and talk to you like you are a moron and and just like real off facts at you about the house and i like to know more than them and things that they don't know so i can go well actually this this i think it's born from my dyslexia and people not people presuming i'm thick whereas i can't spell <laughs> full stop <laughs> that's it i can spell i mean i can't spell well that's it i i made a effort to try and um be clever i don't know know a lot of things because of my dyslexia in order to kind of counteract the fact that people all hear dyslexic and translate it to moronic which i am not well i am just not in a in intellectual way <laughs> more in an everyday kind of a way <laughs> which is a excellent statement next book kind of teenagery what was i obsessed with as a teenager can you guess that's right lord of the rings this is one of my prized possessions it is the hobbit sketchbook by alan lee alan lee worked on the films he's i think he's illustrated some of the books um his drawings goblins that's a good page um I just is gorgeous. He's a huge influence. He's probably the only modern artist that I'm influenced by, if we're being honest. Um, the rest are Renaissance and and Pre-Raphaelite. And now we we're, we're gonna have to knock is it Toriel over as well. I've got two Toriels. Do I? No, I have one Toriel, two Legolas's. I collect weird things. I have figurines. I have, still have the collection of figurines I had as a child. <laughs> this isn't it. This I brought when I was 12. And I want to mount them on my wall. <laughs> because I have all the Hobbit figurines. I never had any of the Lord of the Rings figurines because of the age I was when it came out. But I did have a watch. And I remember it so like vividly and it had um uh, 
I think it was a movie poster. It said Lord of the Rings on it. It cut most people's heads off, but it had um, um, Virgo. Is it Virgo Moisten? Um, yeah, sorry for the bad pronunciation. It had his face on it mainly. <laughs> off topic. Back on topic. Next book. <sighs> this again, I probably read it around when I was 15, 16. Probably, I've, I've been rereading re- re- it at some point and stopped because butterfly brain. Um, this is D.H. Lawrence. Now, this one is John Thomas and Lady Jane. I think now I have read all the different versions of Lady Chatterley's Lover, all the different, you know, he. this was the one that was banned. This was the one that was banned, I think. Possibly my favourite. It's my favourite cover out of the ones I own. No, it's not. My favourite co- cover is the original cover and I own a version of it but all the pages fell out um it's old and whoever owned it before me kept it in a bad place um but yes now I like writing believe it or not (laughs) am I very good at it probably not do I continue to do it and will I continue to do it absolutely but what I write isn't this type of thing. But I have a love of period dramas and, and things like that. And D.H. Lawrence is hands down my favourite author. He's amazing. The way he writes, the vocabulary he uses is just gorgeous. Um, the fact that this book was banned because of the, like, kind of... How do you, how do you say, like... The I can't say the word on... Basically, they thought it was because of the descriptions of certain scenes. Um, but it, I believe it was because of the political view in it. But it's an incredible book. Um, absolutely. If you've not read Lady Chatterley's Lover or a version of Lady Chatterley's Lover, please go and do that if you're watching lady chatterley's lover a different but like i know there's a lot of versions on telly in my opinion the best one is the one with like you say the one with brian blessed in at the end he's in it for two seconds but that's my takeaway from that film the one with sean bean in it um and that is the most accurate to the book out of the ones that exist um but yeah he influences the way I write a lot. Not not subject matter, but language. I f- fell in love with D.H. Lawrence very quickly. I've got a picture <laughs> I drew of him up on my wall <laughs> in the same way people tend to have religious iconography. Um, <laughs> but that's just me, isn't it? So D.H. Lawrence, Lady Chesley's Lover, or John Thomas and Lady Jane, and those are terms for things but yes wonderful book two left um next one the the last one's quite boring i should have picked something more exciting shouldn't i but we live and we learn it's the last kin kingdom now i watched the tv series ashamedly i watched the tv series before i read the book i i said dh lawrence is my favorite author and he probably is but i have two favorite authors and it's a bit neck to neck sometimes and the other one is Bernard Cornwall. I don't read a lot of modern authors. This is probably the only one, really. Um yeah. Love it. Love his language. I feel that fantasy books because of Game of Thrones. And you know my opinion on Game of Thrones, and yes, it's probably absolutely coloured by the stealing of my name. <laughs> um which my name means gentle and happy. Neither things I am um, in Welsh and is a traditional Welsh name. It's in Tolkien. It's in the Sal- Salmeridian, I think. I'm I'm an elvish fishing village, but that I'm proud of because Tolkien. Um, J R um, J, what's it, Martin? The one that did Game of Thrones. Dislike him as a person and as a writer, believe it or not. Mainly. Because he, he, I can't remember what he said, but it was something sexist. 
towards women write, writers that made me want to write the he's an inspiration to me sorry the author of game of friends on the fact that he said women can't write something along the lines of women can't write um scenes of of war and battle well and he's the reason when i write there are horrific scenes of war and battle that are quite descriptive quite you can see them happening and quite concerning he it's his fault when i write i read a lot of historical um accounts because my books tend to be set not, not that any are published and not that, that they probably ever will be but <laughs> set in historical times big inspiration to me bernard cornwall he writes the type of thing that i would hope to write he writes the kind of fantasy meets history which i absolutely love and you can tell how old this book is because it says bbc which the last kingdom then went to netflix but um yeah the way he there's i feel that with fantasy books and this is is probably i've got a really bad itch hang on um (laughs) but fantasy books are kind of written in a kind of and i feel that this archetype was founded by is it j g g m martin the the one that wrote game of Thrones, in the fact that literarily they're not the best like language wise this is my opinion they have a different one i implore you but um they have kind of it's taste it's about taste a kind of not the they don't come across the most intellectual language wise or knowledgeable it's a bit haphazard and i know what makes a good fantasy book the thing beginning with s ending in x and i don't think you can say the word on youtube and violence which yeah have them in the book but don't like grotesquely so it's got to be a depiction of a a life and if you all have all you all your characters are slightly kind of deviant in the fact that their two favorite things are um x and violence it's not gonna be there's not gonna be the plot bernard cornwall very good at plot he has violence and he's i believe has i read this ages ago the last i read reread it in wales and that was gorgeous and i was going through a full-on viking phase and i was in a fake fur and i was outside and there was bats and i could see hills fields and mountains and i was like ha 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 feeling my warlord fantasy (laughs) um but yeah incredible author writes really well If you've not read Bernard Cornwall, do it, if you like that type of book. Last book, probably deeply boring for you. If you don't know, I have worked, and hopefully continue to work, although who knows, as a teacher in a school. Well, not a teacher, I'm not qualified to be a teacher, but I teach. I'm a TA, I'm a support assistant no oh my i'm support staff according to my lanyard <laughs> but which annoys me i don't know why it sounds weird um sounds like i'm propping someone up um but this was brought 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 for me by by a friend and someone in charge of me and the reason i have my job not in a underhanded way in the fact that she went you're going for this job the reason i have that job um or had that job who knows by the time this video comes out things be up in the air people um he's a learning outdoor learning across a curric- curriculum hey it's not boring to anyone else but it's been a big help in my planning if you teach forest school or outdoor education i don't teach forest school i'm not forest school trained um also Right, here we go. Let's get into education talk for a second. Also, it's kind of felt at the moment with a lot of people that Ofsted aren't the biggest fans of Forest School in the sense that 
how often I do it. I teach outdoor learning once a week and it has to be outdoor learning. It can't be forest school because of the fact that Ofsted aren't the biggest fans of it being that often or with the age of children I teach because I teach key stage two, all of them at once. Um, <laughs> genuinely, it's a village school though, so it's like, it's a small school. It's not like, like it's under a hundred, it's under 50. <laughs> It's about 20 pupils, but this has been really helpful in planning and it has, it has changed my life. Oh, and it was an Exmouth present from her and she's a lovely person and it has really genuinely helped me. I do think she did genuinely want me to start some sort of outdoor learning revolution, which I haven't done. Maybe I should. Maybe that's my aim. But yes. It's beautiful. I love it. It's one of these books that are useful. <laughs> will 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 it? Is it the most entertaining book? Like, is it funny? No. But did it help me plan a lot? Yes. And if I continue to work in schools and continue to teach outdoor learning, I hope if I am working in a school, I teach outdoor learning because it's what's important to me and linking it to the curriculum. I like planning. I'm a freak. I do enjoy planning. I, this will always be useful to me if that's what I continue to do, which I'm not sure about at the moment. I might not. <laughs> this is why you need to buy my art. This is a, that's a joke. Like, please buy my art. It's still a joke. Joke with an essence of truth. You know what I mean. Um, I need to get my art up and running because of I have no job security. <laughs> but yeah. Those are the books that are important to me. Those are the books that made me. Is that what I'm calling this? Maybe. These are the books that made me. Can you see my spot on my forehead? My, I'm all over the place today, so I'm going to say goodbye now. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Comment below a book that's important to you. Right, here's a book that was impactful in your life and a book that I should read. And then we get really dangerous because then I will go out and buy the book and read it and that will be problematic to my wallet. So do that. <laughs> do that. Suggest a book. Tell me a book that's important to you and why. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye. Did I salute? I salute. Goodbye.